Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome to a highlight video of a recent stream done by Sea Power. This is the first time you're looking at Sea Power. It's an upcoming naval game. We cannot have enough of those because at the moment the choice is very, very slim. This is by one of the lead developers from Cold Waters, so some of the mechanics might be familiar. As for the video quality, um, it is recording from Discord and it's recording in 720p, so that means that the quality is not quite there. But this uh, does not go to show for anything for the quality of the game overall, of course. As it was a Discord recording, you're also going to be seeing some pop-ups on the top right-hand side of the screen as people were chatting along as they were watching the stream. Just try to ignore that as much as possible. The stream lasted for two and a half hours. I've cut it down to some of the most interesting bits for you to get a quick overview of what the state of the game is right now. And as for a release date, they are targeting 2024. So ideally, we'll be playing this sometime later this year. In this first clip, you're looking at an escort mission. The Strait of Hormuz is not a particularly safe place in this particular encounter for your tankers. So you are in charge of a couple of warships to escort those tankers through the strait. If my identification is correct, you're looking at two different ships. This is the Wainwright CG-26. And we also have the USS Paul F. Foster, Spruance class destroyer. And of course, yeah. we got a couple of tankers. You gotta defend these guys from the aggressors. Now, first thing that pops into view here is the beauty of the game. The graphics look really crisp, even this with this, let's say, relatively lower resolution. I'm not sure how much time you will actually have to look at the ships, because it is, or it can be, a strategy game, depending on how many ships are under your control. So you might be looking at the tactical element a lot more. Thankfully, you can do both at the same time, because the game seems to feature these movable elements, so you can keep the tactical display open, as they do here, while still being able to look at the beauty of the ships. Bottom left-hand side of the screen here shows that this is indeed the Paul F. Foster. Uh, shows its speed, direction, course, etc., as well as all of the armaments that you can find on this ship. Very good way to get a quick overview of what weapon systems you have available. Okay. The threat to the tankers that we're currently escorting is submarines. So it's time to start hunting them. Let's launch the helicopters. As for controlling said helicopter, you can see you can just click what the altitude of the helicopter should be, and it immediately starts climbing to that altitude. Now, while the helicopters are working on their takeoffs and starting to hunt the submarines, a few things about the game. Um, it's going to feature a dynamic campaign, which means that you'll have warships that most likely persist throughout the campaign, if you keep them alive. And um, the game will also have custom missions. These are most likely going to be supported by the Steam Workshop, slash can be uploaded and downloaded to the Steam Workshop. So even if you complete the campaign, there will be plenty to do. Now, back to more game controls, and I do apologize for the potato quality. Um, you can see that having just a simple right-click on a unit gives you a ton of options, from navigations to what sensors they should have available to joining formations. You can also set what the state of the flight deck is, um, like can helicopters or even aircraft at large be allowed to take off or not. You can have their air defense state, or you can just tell them to cease fire completely. A little later, a couple of targets have shown up. Not necessarily submarines, because the enemy also has some surface combatants. So it's time to start engaging said surface combatants. This poor helicopter here has already ventured far too close to the enemy and seems to be coming under flak fire. The enemy's not yet resorted to missiles, but well, once it starts targeting a helicopter with a missile, it's going to be a potentially short lifespan for the helicopter. So time to start shooting back in anger. The enemy over here is the P-230 Kanjar, which is a Kaman class Iranian fast attack craft. You can see it's definitely taking aim at the helicopter. Let's see how well it does once it starts coming under missile fire. These Iranian attack boats don't carry a lot of firepower, but that Bofors 57mm that you can see firing at the helicopter can still be a threat to the Hilo, and the four Harpoon missiles that it carries can definitely be a threat to not only our warships, but certainly our tankers. We have to get rid of these guys quickly. To make matters worse, there's also this Iranian frigate, which is opening up with one of its C-802 missiles. There's another 
And the gun is already opening up. This seems to be a harpoon coming weapon. into the Iranian fleet. No deal, and it's weapon. just about to make contact that with that originally good. firing ship. Here we go. Uh, what? No, it's getting it's distracted by the decoys. So this patrol boat uh, gets to live a little longer, which is bad news for the American group here. They're definitely already shooting back with their main gun. Helos are still being scrambled out of the area. Um, this guy is still targeting one of the helicopters. Helicopters seemingly being told to flank, potentially to keep good radar vision. Now, until now, the American ships were operating under MCON. Emission control means no radar signals go out. That has just changed, as one of the Americans has turned on its air search radar. And immediately, we get a couple more contacts on the radar screen. You might be able to assume that this is a hostile aircraft, considering the uh, path it is on. But, well, you don't really want to be accidentally shooting down a passenger liner. So we have to identify this radar contact first. You can request to identify yourself to see if it wants to turn on its IFF and figure out exactly what you're looking at. This particular radar track, however, does not feel like it needs to respond. Uh, it could still be explained by a pilot not getting the message. It could also be a hostile aircraft. Now, hostile aircraft or not, there's still the issue of these patrol boats and frigates. Or at least frigate, we've only seen one so far. So a couple more missiles are underway. Let's see if these are going to have better luck. Very closely sea skimming. And is this harpoon gonna go through? Definitely a bunch of defenses getting put up. But it's going right up and diving right down onto its target. And hit. The boat might have taken a hit, and the explosion looks pretty, but it's still firing, so still considered a threat. This thing might need another dose. You can see in the events log, insofar as it's readable, that uh, the frigate, the pole, was the one that actually hit the track. And, um, well, it might have hit them, but we're not getting a kill confirmation yet. As the patrol boats in the frigate, or frigates, are getting engaged, there's also another target that is getting a missile. You're looking at an SM-2ER, extended range, going for that air track. Um, apparently this is assumed hostile. I don't know if we actually have positive identification on that target yet, but a missile has been launched regardless. With all these different targets, um, both surface as well as aerial, and potentially subsurface, but we haven't spotted any submarines yet, you can see how this game can get a little hectic. Thankfully, as it is a single player game, you have the opportunity to pause time, just evaluate your strategy and plan your next moves. Now by the looks of it, that lone aerial contact we were engaging is not exactly dead. So we're going to engage it yet again. Launch another of the SM-2 ERs. As this is a game about combat, it is entirely likely that your ships will take damage. So I'll let the dev explain how damage control works. Damage control here. Mm, you have some damage control teams on the ship. We have five sections of the ship uh, with the systems. Uh, this system is shown, shown only when they are damaged or um, destroyed. And you also got the fire and flooding um, if, if there is any. Uh, hull damage, overall hull damage and fla flooding is here. Um, Damage and flooding will be repaired, but uh, like in reality, you cannot uh, fix uh, a ship uh, in the sea. You can patch it, but not fix. So there is a little threshold of the um, damage which can be repaired, which water, the water which, that can uh, be pumped out, the um, structural integrity which can be patched. So damage control is definitely another element that you need to keep an eye on. Now, once again, this hostile target has evaded the missile. Um, this helicopter is leading apparently a very blessed life, and once again, another very expensive missile goes up to try and counter it. Supposedly, these missiles cost $409,000 a pop. So, let's hope that we don't have to spend too many more millions trying to shoot down one helicopter. Now, onto another tidbit of information that is very useful. How autonomous are units going to be? So, uh, speaking about being defensive, you had mentioned that we'd be controlling a lot of units during some of these campaigns. So, is there any level of expectation we can have for the autonomy of our units, either offensively or defensively? 
Uh, you have this weapons free, weapon tight, weapon hold. If I uh, set it to weapons free, it will start uh, popping weapons on everything red in the um, in the which is visible uh, using the same uh, logic as the AI. So, for example, here is this guy. It's still not dead yet. Actually, here have it on another one. Uh, Actually, I don't need to kill it, right? And if I want to conserve my armor, I just will wait till it burns out and sinks. Uh, but um, AI will not do this. AI will try to finish uh, crippled vessels. So thankfully, you can leave some of the target prioritization and uh, target engaging to the AI. You don't have to do all of the steps manually. You can trust that your commanders aboard your ships will pick a target and also hopefully take action against incoming hostile missiles. Here's another bit I found particularly interesting, talking about how you can have a white seeker for your harpoon or a narrow seeker and what the advantages and disadvantages are going to be. Uh, now, the thing is with harpoon, actually, let me show you. Uh, can't uh, ships uh, say information of your position to this battery? Uh, yes, uh, enemy also have a shared vision as a player has. So, like, if those guys will be able to notice and identify my one my ship, I would be uh, under missile attacks from both ships and uh, ground installation. Uh, the thing which is experiment, like, Harpoon is a quite a shitty missile because of the um, seeker. So, look, these three guys here. If I shoot a Harpoon on them, Usually it was like this. See, it has very wide uh, um, seekers. So in case of attacking these guys, uh, it always be the element because it's a bigger one. All Like if I send harpoons at three different targets, they all go for element because it has bigger RCS. So uh, in reality, they usually go around this with uh, having uh, pre-launch settings of a wide or narrow seeker. Uh, so. I have added the thing when you are shooting into a particular target, you will get a narrow, narrow seeker. That's why I was able to hit all these three guys uh, selectively. It also it obviously um, uh, limits the ability of missile to hit ship if ship uh, change course, and it will be able to evade. Seven, zero, zero, uh, but well. It's a tactics, right? I mean, uh, the advantage of Harpoon is the fire and forget um, mechanics. You don't have to paint anyone with a seeker. You don't have uh, to reveal your position that you're attacking someone. Also, this missile comes unnoticed uh, until it pops out of the horizon because it flies very low. Since Sea Power is a game that not only covers the NATO side, but also the Pact slash Soviet forces side, this is another very interesting scenario. Your mission is to break into the Atlantic. And apparently, they've picked the Strait of Gibraltar to do that through. I was expecting a, let's say, a breakout into the Atlantic through the GIUK gap, but uh, no Iceland this time around. Anyway, you might need to disable both naval base and airfield to be able to successfully pass the Strait of Gibraltar. This scenario has quite a lot of eye candy. The bottom left hand side of the screen it says TAVKR Vilnius. I had to look that up. Uh, TAVKR means Heavy Aircraft Carrying Cruiser. So please don't mistake this thing for an aircraft carrier because it absolutely is not. Much like the new Japanese destroyer. Whereas in the previous scenario, you only had a couple of helicopters. This time around, on this heavy aircraft carrying cruiser, we of course have a whole flight deck. You can see that this gives you a lot of flexibility in the type of loadouts, flights, and you can even set the call signs of these wings, um, assign them to a squadron, pick how many you want to launch. This opens up a whole new area of the battlefield. Now, since it's an aircraft car sorry, cruiser, you can't instantly launch everything, so your launch order is going to definitely be a strategic decision. Which aircraft do you need to get out first? Which aircraft are going to have to go on, let's say, longer distance missions and might need to arrive before the rest of them? 
again, highlighting the modeling here, um, everything is modeled and aircraft really are shown to be ready for launch. So there is a lot to look into, like the actual visual models. Please, if you are going to be playing this game at some point, uh, take some moments to enjoy and appreciate all the models and all the moving parts that you can see in the battle. It can definitely be an easy option to go to the tactical screen and just see where your blips and blobs are heading. But I think there's a lot of eye candy and I, for one, am very much looking forward to making cinematic videos of this game. A little bit more naval nerding out here. As you can see that there is a new ESM contact, electronic support measures. This means that something got detected because it's sending out radar waves or at least radio waves of its own. You don't always have to be blaring out with your own radar or sonar. You can also just listen in. And that's exactly what is happening here with ESM. So that is another way to be targeting units or at least detecting them. And then of course they're designated as a track and then it's up to you to try and identify them. As you can see on the tactical screen, there is definitely no shortage of targets in this particular mission. Or rather, I should say contacts, because not necessarily everything deserves a missile or a shell. There can definitely be, because you are in the Strait of Gibraltar, civilian traffic. How much you're willing to risk that civilian traffic, let's say accidentally or maybe not so accidentally taking a missile, is going to be entirely up to you. A moment ago I said that it is probably quite likely that you might be spending a lot of time looking at the tactical display. Uh, looking at the vast number of contacts as well as moving parts that you have of your own. Uh, this is one of those situations where you might actually not have that much time to admire the beauty of these ships. You'll be trying to figure out which track is deserving of attention. Which track is actually trying to take out one of your own units and needs to get addressed first. Um, thankfully, you can of course pause the game at any point and just have a look at the action up close. In this scenario, as your forces, at least your main forces, let's say your carriers approaching from the east, you have a nice little surprise coming in from the west. This is K-123, that's an Alpha class submarine. That's the one that can do about 41 knots submerged. Really quick boat. Uh, with that, you might have a very nasty surprise awaiting NATO. So you can see that, at least in this scenario, really engaging the enemy in all three domains, if you will. Subsurface, surface, and aerial. There's a lot of moving parts. As the developer started up the scenario, I saw it was a four-star one. This might mean it is the most difficult scenario, or rather one of the most difficult scenarios that's currently in the game. It has a lot of moving parts, and considering the complexity of the game, at least of this scenario, I think uh, this game is not going to be for everyone. That, of course, on the one hand is um, very logical because there is a lot of complexity to naval warfare. And especially if you also start adding in aerial elements and subsurface elements, such as submarines, it becomes a lot more complex. Having to manage your fleet, your formations, your aircraft, um, whether or not any of those units are allowed to use radars, what sort of a loadout you want, when you want that particular loadout at a particular point so you can engage a particular target, that's, well, that's where I get really excited. That is the level of planning that I think you do have in Simeno, which is Command Modern Naval and Air Operations, or something to that effect. Um, but not in very many other games. The thing for me with Simeno was that it didn't have any visual element. It was just the tactical display. Sure enough, you could draw up um, images of a unit that you were looking at on the small screen. So let's say on the tactical display, so you at least had some connection to the unit. What I really like about Sea Power is that it leans a little bit more into the direction of a game. And as such, there's actually some, some eye candy. There's something to see. I think the combination is excellent. Having something to see and having all of that tactical, strategical depth, I really like it. And I really look forward to this game. 
Um, I think it's something that since, uh, what, like Cold Waters or maybe as far back as Harpoon or Subcommand, I don't think that there are any games covering this particular field. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, I'm very happy to see that the devs are taking their time building it. As you can see, it is not something that you build quickly. This takes a lot of depth. And being able to extend, let's say, the lifetime of this game and the replayability by being able to build your own missions, upload them, and download other missions from the Steam Workshop, as well as a dynamic campaign, means that my hopes for this game are really high. With that, there's always a caveat. We're looking at a stream that the developer is showing us. The developer is very much controlling what we see. So there might be some elements that are not yet fleshed out or that don't work as, let's say, we players expect it to work. Stuff like that, we'll just have to wait and see. I hope to get access to the game at some point so I can give you a much more detailed look at it, a more in-depth gameplay showing. And with that, you'll be able to get an even better opinion for yourself about whether this is something that you want to play or not. Now, down below in the description, there's the link to the entire stream. It is a three-hour stream, and that means that there is a lot more to see. I just wanted to show you a couple of highlights in this video so you don't have to go through the whole three-hour stream. But if you're interested to see more, you can. Click the link down below in the description. What you can also find in the description is the link to the Steam page. If you want to keep following this game, and if you're a naval buff like me, I highly recommend that you do, click the wishlist button. It's also a signal to the developer and as such to the publisher that you're interested in the game. And, uh, you know, developers being able to show more wishlists gives them potentially more leverage with a publisher to invest more resources into the game and make it even better. At least that's my understanding of how these dynamics work. Hope you guys are looking forward to the game as much as I am. I hope you guys are looking forward to watching videos on the game because when there's something more playable for us players, I will definitely be doing that and showing it to you on a video. Thank you for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments and I'll see you soon for more.